Good evening, everyone. My name is Westburn Majors. I'm the chair on, for the Public Works Committee for Harrisburg City Council. We want to start by welcoming everyone here to our Public Works facility. Thank you for taking the time out of your schedules to come out and hear about the sanitation ordinance, the proposal. Uh, it's Bill 3 of 2018 before City Council currently to make some changes and amendments to the Harrisburg Sanitation Ordinance. Uh, we wanted to, hopefully everyone has a, a copy of the presentation and the overview. Uh, there was also an additional handout that was provided uh, regarding the potential for uh, eminent domain pro proceedings to begin. Uh, so there were three handouts that everyone got. If you did not get a copy of those handouts, we will make most of the information available on the Harrisburg City website. If not, please feel free to reach out to us and we can make sure you have a copy of all the information. This is the first of three public hearings on this matter. Uh, the next one will be June 6 at 5.30 p.m. at the Boys and Girls Club located on 21227 Berry Hill Street. And the third will be on June 13th at 5.30 p.m. at the Camp Curtin YMCA. Uh, now I'd just like to, to turn it over to Mayor Eric Pappenfuss who will do a overview of the presentation. And after that, we'll have folks from Public Works here and members of council that we hope to be able to answer any questions that you may have. Again, this is just a proposal. This is not the final form of the bill. And the, the mayor will run through the uh, presentation. So thank you again for coming out. Okay. <clears throat> thank you, Wes. Wes is chair of our Public Works Committee for City Council. And it'll be his committee that'll be having uh, these public meetings and any additional hearings that are necessary before uh, council eventually adopts a new ordinance. A couple bookkeeping matters. Uh, I will speak as loudly as I can. Uh, and also, I'm going to try and go a little slowly because I know there are some people that don't speak English and there's some translation services going on. So if I go slowly, that's why. Also, uh, I know we're crowded tonight, but we do have water. There's bottled water over there by in the 7-Up container. It's iced. There's a water dispenser there. So if you're thirsty, uh, please help yourselves. We, we made a number of copies. Uh, one of them is a one-page handout, which many of you have gotten. It says public meeting regarding sanitation bill. And basically, that is the highlights of this presentation. I'm going to walk you through the presentation, but the highlights are on that one-pager. If you haven't gotten it yet, there'll also be more on the back table when you exit. And uh, there were some other uh, handouts and information, but uh, we're going to talk right now about our sanitation bill. So it's been a long time since the city of Harrisburg has updated its sanitation ordinance. And part of what we've needed to do uh, is address it comprehensively and in a way that uh, brings us into the new century, basically. Um, and uh, I'm going to go slowly over the changes. And after this presentation, we have our whole team, which I will introduce to you. And they'll all be available to answer your questions. So. We can go to the first slide. OK. There are really four key parts to the changes of the sanitation ordinance. And I think you're going you're gonna to like the first part uh, perhaps the best. And that has to do with we are strengthening our code to make it easier for us to crack down on people that abuse the law. And basically, we are going to have uh, a section of the new ordinance which describes certain acts that are considered violations of this new code. Things that are included among violations include illegal dumping, improper disposal, uh, excessive accumulation of waste. Other acts uh, could include the failure to separate or to, uh, if you block the street with, uh, with containers or even a failure to register as a private hauler, if you're a private hauler. Those are all going to be spelled out in the code in ways in which they aren't currently, and that's going to help us a lot from an enforcement standpoint. So the penalties for those acts, which uh, we're considering violations of the ordinance, the key to understand there is that we're dividing them into two categories. Okay. Category one, this is what we will call the serious violation category. These are going to be fines that are punishable by $1,000. We'll talk about it, but it's a significant, significant fine. 
could include court costs, could even include imprisonment. So fine, imprisonment, up to $1,000. And this includes violations that we're calling Category 1 violations, such as illegal dumping, which we all know is a problem, improper waste disposal involving construction and demolition waste or, or other hazardous waste materials, um, excessive accumulation of waste of over a thousand pounds. Let's say your neighbor just dumps all the contents out. You've got a thousand pounds piling up when you're only supposed to have a container. Or, importantly, a failure of a private hauler to register to dump within the city. And we want these private haulers to register. We want you to all know that only legitimate private haulers are registered so we can avoid this problem of disreputable people just simply claiming they're hauling the waste but then finding an empty lot or a dark alley in Harrisburg and just dumping it, okay? So those are the category one serious offenses, a $1,000 potential fine and imprisonment. Then we have offenses, but we're calling them category two violations. And these are violations that we want to have deterrence for, but we don't consider them uh, quite as uh, strong as the category one. And for those violations, we're recommending a penalty, a sort of stepped up penalty scale that starts as $100 if you do it once, $250 if you do it twice, and then $500 if you are repeating it for a third time or more. So these violations could include improper waste disposal by failing to put your waste in the proper place, um, excessive accumulation of municipal waste, but not over 1,000 pounds, um, a failure to source separate, uh, obstructing the street or the sidewalk with your dumpster or your cartons, uh, interference with the enforcement of the municipal waste uh, recycling and composting code, or again, a failure of a private hauler to obtain a Harrisburg Mercantile license, which is a little different than the registration that we want them all to have to be hauling, uh, hauling municipal waste. So those are what we're calling the Category 2 violations. And in a moment, you'll get to meet uh, our enforcement officer, and you can talk about how that's going to work practically, and Public Works can talk to you about their experiences if you have any questions. But that's point one, two different uh, levels of offenses. Now, violators of illegal dumping and excessive accumulation sections of the proposed ordinance are also going to be subject to cleanup costs. So if you illegally dump, you're not only going to get that, potentially that $1,000 fine, but you're also going to bill you for the disposal and the cleanup of your trash. Another section of the proposed ordinance will increase enforcement of the code, and this is important, because it's going to allow the director of the Public Works Department, who is currently Aaron Johnson, to designate enforcement officers who will be authorized as law enforcement officers to patrol public and publicly accessible areas of the city and to issue these citations for violations of the ordinance. So suddenly, we'll have a lot of other people able to enforce this new code because they will be designated as enforcement officers by the Public Works Director. So you can see this is, uh, this is a big, serious change and I believe a much needed one. We're also going to authorize other law enforcement officials with authority and jurisdiction within the municipal boundaries of Harrisburg to write citations and enforce this ordinance. So, i.e., Harrisburg police officers will now be able to issue a citation for sanitation-related offenses. Also, codes enforcement officers, so basically badge carriers of the city of Harrisburg can also enforce this ordinance. All right. So that was one of the four sort of areas of change, enforcement and cleaning up Harrisburg. Now we're going to talk about how we need to modernize the ordinance to better reflect improvements that we've made and we've happily made, all of us together, to our recycling uh, program in Harrisburg. And I'm particularly proud of the fact 
that over the past four or five years, we have more than tripled recycling in the city. We have the mixed stream recycling. We've got active cardboard recycling. And as you know, we recently added uh, glass recycling back into the stream, which, uh, which is working out very well. And hopefully you've, you've, you've all found your, your local glass drop-off center. And if not, we can talk about that tonight. So uh, the new law now describes the city's curbside collection properly of the designated recyclable materials from both residential and commercial properties. It does talk about how the recycling program is free, but it is also important to note that the recycling program is mandatory. It is mandatory to recycle in Pennsylvania, and we make that clear in our code. We take recycling seriously. The director of the Department of Public Works or a designee will be responsible for all aspects of our recycling program in the city. It includes the preparation of all necessary plans for recyclable materials, the coordination of those plans with local, state, and federal agencies. And again, the old code was, was very big. In the old days, Harrisburg, as you know, was in the incineration business. That's what we did. We now, as part of our commitment to a sustainable city, we, uh, we hope to be in the recycling business. So under the proposed ordinance, the Public Works Director has the authority to promulgate rules and regulations that concern the collection of recycling, including things such as the days, the locations, whether it's curbside or not, the type of receptacles, and the conveyance. And the Director of Public Works also has authority to have rules and regulations that concern the disposal of recycling, the hours of operation, the receiving hours, what's acceptable, what isn't, and the type of uh, receptacle and the conveyance. As, a, as another point, you should know that the proposed ordinance prohibits the open burning of recyclable materials in the city, and the proposed ordinance will also provide for the development of a composting program in the city, and I'm happy to give you some updates on that later on tonight as well. We're very committed to getting that up and running as the next phase of our green and sustainable city. Okay, so that is the recycling portion. We are now on to the third portion of the ordinance which has changes, and I think this one is going to be very popular because we are proposing eliminating the minimum fee that we currently have on the books for vacant properties. A lot of people own a parking lot and they, get pay, they have to pay the minimum <coughs> trash fee or they have a building which is certifiably vacant and they have to pay the minimum fee. We are eliminating that, and in instances where it's certified, we will not be charging. So that's gonna save people, hopefully, um, some significant money. So uh, we are, however, we're creating a newly defined term in this ordinance, and we're calling it a vacant property. And here's the definition of a vacant property. So it's any building, or a structure, or a lot, residential or commercial, or simply a parcel which is not occupied legally or inhabited. And it's a reasonable person standard which is going to be used to determine whether a property is vacant. And some indicators which they're going to use for this reasonable person standard is a lack of activity, a lack of furnishings inside a building, the accumulation of mail, shut off uh, notices, lack of utility services, uh, broken or boarded up windows or doors. <coughs> that, that's the, the common sense criteria to determine if your property qualifies as vacant. So vacant properties uh, are going to include any of these parcels of land where no municipal waste has been generated for collection for at least 90 days. And vacant properties will not include property that is unoccupied simply because it's undergoing construction or renovation or rehabilitation in compliance with proper permitting and laws and ordinances. That's not what this is intended for. This is intended for truly, truly vacant uh, structures. One section of the proposed ordinance provides that the owner of vacant property shall not be responsible for paying the annual municipal waste fees. That's the key point. Right now, there's a minimum rate. We're eliminating the minimum rate if you are certified vacant. And the director of the Department of Public Works or a designee will be responsible for determining whether a property is vacant. And we see that basically happening through a certification process that's gonna happen 
once a year before the bills are sent out. We're going to get to the bills in a moment. And if you're vacant, you're certified for a period of a year, and then you're renewed. And if over the course of the year you become unvacant because somebody moves in and you request trash service, then that's a good thing, and we can start up billing and deliver you uh, containers at that time. All right, here's a big change, and it's a significant one, and it's important that everyone understand it and that we have a good, open conversation about it. We are proposing, instead of a monthly bill, which everybody gets, which is a lot of paper and uh, a, sometimes can be a lot of hassle, we are suggesting one bill which uh, comes once a year along with your property tax bill. And an annual billing means that the annual fee for city municipal waste services will appear as a separately stated charge on the same bill as that real estate tax bill, and that's going to get mailed to all the property owners each and every year. Residential. We are not proposing a change for commercial properties. It's easier for residential because everyone pays the same amount. For a commercial, there's a lot of variance between um, different commercial businesses, and it's based on the size of your dumpster or the number of cartons you have. But for residences, it's a straightforward, easily calculated amount. So we're proposing this change to annual billing for residential property holders only. And although the municipal waste services fee and real estate taxes will appear on the same bill, you should know that they are, they are distinct and separate charges. All right. Now, the good thing about this is that for the first time, you're going to be able to get a discount. It's a modest discount, but you can actually get a discount on your residential bill. And just like when you pay your property tax bills, there's a discount period at the beginning of the year. If you pay your bill within the first 60 days of the year, which is considered the discount period, you will get a 2% discount off your trash bill. And if you choose not to pay during the discounted period, well, then uh, we are asking during the regular billing period that you make full payment within 120 days of that uh, mailing date. If you do that, there's no, if it's after 60 days, but within 120 days, there's no uh, discount, but there's no penalty and you're all set. Now, annual billing means that the property owner would not receive a monthly bill. So you're just going to get one bill a year. This means less paper used in the billing process. It's going to save us over $100,000 a year just in postage alone, which we can then put back into the system for better customer service, better processing. We've got representatives here from Treasury and from billing, and we can make the city a lot more efficient if we go this route. It's a convenience to the residential property owner as the property owner will know when to expect the bill. At the same time of the year, you can plan ahead, plan accordingly. Now, residential property owners who pay their real estate taxes through their mortgage company simply can inform the mortgage company that they will pay the annual municipal waste bill separate and apart from their real estate taxes. And such residential property owners may also choose to simply increase their, their escrow. So you can, you can either just pay it separately or you can pay it through uh, through the escrow, but either way, um, it, is, uh, it is about having one bill at the beginning of the year. That's what's being proposed. All right. Uh, are there any questions? And, be, and I'm sure there are a lot. Let me, let me introduce the team, if I may introduce the team. Um, I'll just introduce the front row. How about that? Uh, we've got, first of all, we have uh, Dave West, who is our Deputy Director of Public Works. Aaron Johnson could not be here tonight. Um, but Dave runs sanitation, and he has the institutional knowledge of how many years of sanitation? 23, 23 years working here at the city, so he knows it is now. He can, answer, he can answer the questions. Next to him is John Rarig, who is our recycling coordinator. Um, he used to be the recycling coordinator for the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And then he retired, and then he's come to the city, and he works for us part-time, and uh, he can answer all your questions having to do with recycling. We also have Jeff Baltimore, who many of you know, uh, from Harrisburg City Council, who is part is basically in charge of the day-to-day -day operational aspect of how this is going to work. And a couple members of City Council who should be introduced are Asha Green and Dave Madsden, who, along with Wes, I assume, are both on the, uh, are all on the Public Works Committee and are here tonight. Are there any other, and Shemaine Daniels is in the back, I know that. I don't know if there are any other council members, but it's a, it's a good, uh, good turnout. 
Uh, I also, we also have our law department here to answer any legal questions, and we have other members of the team. So, so we are ready for you. And what I would recommend we do is, uh, there's no rush, we can take as long as we need, but if you could come up to the microphone and state your question directly in the microphone, we then have our own microphones and I can get the proper team member to answer your question. So if a couple people want to sort of make their way up to the microphone, while that is happening, I would also just like to take a moment to say that there is a handout which talks about this very building, and it's called Eminent Domain of Certain Parcels for the Permanent Public Works Facility. Now, there will be a hearing in City Council Chambers on the eminent domain action that we are proposing, but so that it's clear, the City of Harrisburg is proposing to use eminent domain to take this building paying the property owner the fair compensation of the market value of the building, but to use this building as our permanent home for public works. And it's not just this tax parcel, it's a whole series of parcels that goes all the way back uh, to the highway back there. And um, this is where we moved. <coughs> Remember, we were originally located at the incinerator. So in 2014, we moved here when the incinerator was privatized. We like the building. We'd like to invest more in the building, develop the building over time, have additional space, additional parking, and we can answer questions about that. But I wanted to give you a heads up that that is happening and that there will be a full hearing de dedicated just to eminent domain at a later date to be set by Harrisburg City Council. But since we're here, uh, you should know that is our plan for a permanent public works facility. So we will now move to questions. Please step up. Maybe state your name for the record so that we have that, and, uh, and then we'll figure out who should answer. Okay. My name is Deborah Brown, and I'm directing this question at Wes. Okay. Very good. Vacant property. <clears throat> um, the um, waste and stuff that are at vacant properties, like a property was sold, the property was cleaned out, the trash is stacked up, and it's still there. It has been there for two or three months. So, what happens with that? Yeah, all right. I'll have Dave West, sure. Go ahead. All right, if you call us and let us, <clears throat> once we're informed about it, we will send um, Howard Drayton, send up, please. Howard is our enforcement officer okay. for sanitation, and he will go, and his investigation is to dig through the trash and find an address. Once he finds the address, we will pick it up and we will charge it to that property. Okay, if he asks me later, I'll tell him that. Yeah, I'll, I'll, come, I'll come around and I can offline, we can get the address so we can have uh, Mr. Drayton address that issue. Okay. And right, and right now we have one enforcement officer, but with the ability to deputize more, we'll have a greater capacity to, to deal with that, and we'll have a greater capacity to fine, in addition to billing for the cleanup costs, we'll be able to put in that fine and that threat of imprisonment, uh, all of which I think uh, will potentially be helpful in deterring. The problem. Thank okay. you. Step right up. Good evening, everyone, Mr. Mayor and yeah. your experts. Uh, my question, Mr. Mayor, is uh, the concerns about the waiver on some of the vacant lots and some of the dormant utility lines that fees are still being assessed upon. Could you reiterate? A little bit more on that. Okay. Right. So Michael Bloodworth. Yes. Uh, Good. So the, the thought is that right now, by the ordinance, we charge a minimum rate. And that is whether or not you generate any trash at all. And I think it's the the feeling, it's at least my feeling, that that's not that's not fair to those that don't generate any trash because they own a vacant property. Maybe you own a, a side uh, parcel, a side lawn that you're caring for as a community garden or a parking lot that's separate from your business and you're already paying you know, trash disposal for your business. Or maybe it's just a vacant property where nobody is living there. Um, so we think it's a, as a matter of fairness, it is best not to charge uh, that sort of minimum monthly amount. But we are going to certify that via the Public Works Department going out and inspecting and making sure it really is uh, it really is what it says it's going to be. And one of the things that we did when we first took over and we looked at sanitation is we went out and we audited 
every commercial account in the city. We looked at every place to make sure that they were being billed for the actual amount that they were, were generating. And so we've we finished that portion of the audit, but now we think we need to address this, this vacant issue. And um, it is an issue for a number of people because we get a lot of concerns about this on a regular basis at the city. And frankly, a lot of those people um, are currently they just they're not paying their bills or they're contesting their bills so this will this will clean this up it's not going to be retroactive but it will it will clean it up moving forward okay uh, okay and the yeah. other caveat to that is after the assessment has been made and the, the lot or the property has been certified that it is dormant and nothing's there uh is that another 45 or 90 day process before the word get back or so we're imagining you get certified once a year at the end of the year before the new yearly billing would go out. So before we mail the billing, which happens at the beginning of the year, at the end of the previous year, you get certified as vacant. And maybe that certification would you know, be re-upped regularly and annually because it really is an unimproved lot that's vacant. Um, and, and what I was saying at the beginning is if, if over the course of the year, however, the property becomes not vacant, then we would be happy to institute, we would deliver containers, and we could do a monthly billing uh, for the rest of the year, and then to you get back on the new cycle of the yearly billing. So if uh, you have a property, it's certified vacant, you don't get assessed a trash bill, but somebody eventually moves in in June, we would start up monthly billing in June and take you through to the end of the year. So we think we have a pretty good system in place, and a lot of these vacant properties are already coded in the system. They've already been inspected and audited, so it's not a tremendous amount of work. Oh. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Hi, everybody. My name is Rebecca Lyons. Uh, I'm hoping I can keep my questions straight because as people were talking, I brought up, oh, I wondered about this. But uh, first of all, I wanted to, to check again, uh, I had some trouble, which, which tax bill is, do they want to attach the trash bill to? Your, your property tax bill. Okay, the, the city one. Yes. The, the, county, the county won't have any dipping into it or anything? Or? No, this would go to the city, although what happens is if, if you don't pay your property tax bill at the end of the year, um, currently, under the current current law, the county is the one that then goes to collect it moving forward after after the course of one year. So we are essentially um, handing over the collection of delinquent accounts to the county, um, and they so they would be collecting delinquent property taxes and delinquent trash bills. Okay. Now the vacant slash the other one is the vacant slash dormant properties that the other folks were talking about. Uh, the lady and gentleman were talking about and leaving trash behind, i.e., once every month or two, there's a set of mattresses used, you know, just kind of thrown out, and it, and they just sit there. And in the past, when things like this have happened, I've tried to, I've had to call, or I've called the codes people had to get one of the forms get a couple extra forms sent to me so that I can fill, fill it out and then the codes the codes people are so busy they really can't get to it and the other is you know, dor dormant slash vacant properties that have been uh, bought up in the tax auctions and that and and people are supposed to be built you know restoring not you know restoring I don't know or refurbish them to make them livable and back on the tax rolls again. Okay, that's not hap that's not happening. Uh, people are just the people that buy them are just leaving them dormant windows and and and, and vagrants and vague windows broken. The the neighborhood kids break windows in the properties and nothing nothing happens to get that property back going again. Is there any kind of plan to put a, a rider on people that buy at these tax auctions? Uh, that you've got a couple that you've got, you know, like 18 months to two years to show or get it back up, yeah. up and running or we'll take it and tear it down. <laughs> yeah. 
and anyone and can jump pay in. The fine. I, so we're talking about a couple of different issues yeah. here. One of the issues, the issue with blighted properties that go up for sale at a tax auction. Mm -hmm. um, we have tried to reform that system a bit. Mm -hmm. We require, uh, we, we identify a property if it's condemned. Uh, we require uh, the potential purchasers to sort of identify themselves at the time of the purchase. But we need some help with state law changes on that. And I can tell you that our codes administrator, Dave Patton, and I, and I have both been up on Capitol Hill meeting with uh, the sort of blight task force that the state legislature has put together. And they're looking at a series of potential changes to the law that could help deal with that issue. One of which would require uh, anyone who purchases at a, a, a condemned property at a tax auction to be able to show um, to, to basically raise a bond or to show proof of material proof of their ability to fix up the property. We think that would make a big difference, but we can't currently do that under the current law, but that's, okay. that's a proposal. The, um, let's talk about bulk items and mattresses. Dave? Yes. The, the aspect of the bulk items that you see lying around in your community to go through the process of codes, which actually would turn it over to the Public Works Department. Uh, you can contact the Public Works Department yourself through our website, through our 311 Information Center, and we have a number directly to the Public Works Office, which is on the website. Once we are informed, we will go out and we will um, take care of that situation. Okay, I picked up some cards. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and also, if you have the address right now, we have uh, one of our, our city clerks who can take the address from you and then we can pass that information on as well. Okay, yeah, the unit actually faces State Street, but on Street, a couple but. other things. I mean, uh, you know, right now that um, that you can put out one bulk item a week with your trash, as a, as uh, in, in in our current code under uh, residential property owners. So that's something good to remember. And part of our plan for encouraging uh, waste haulers to register with the city is to try and um, stop the the sort of um, uh, the, 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 the problem which is going on right now, which is that people are just sort of claiming to dispose of trash properly and then not doing it. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to tackle that through different ways in the ordinance, but we recognize these are long-standing, significant issues, and we're trying to all work together to resolve them. And another thing we're doing is we're trying to build capacity on enforcement by deputizing more enforcement officers. Otherwise, I know codes can be overwhelmed at times. Mm -hmm. One enforcement yeah. officer with sanitation. We, need, we, we, need, we all need to work together. Okay, and, and you know, on the vacant properties thing, if people aren't fixing them up that have ownership of them, are they, you know, like they should be doing? It's taken forever. Is there, is it only through the codes, people that we can? It, it's hard uh, for, you know, to, to force a private property owner sometimes to do the right thing. We can, yeah. we can cite them, we can find them. Um, uh, ideally, uh, with with strong neighborhoods and people constantly uh, focused on the problem, we can we can turn it around and we can get people to do the right thing. But that, I mean, that's just a continual problem. Yeah. Okay. Because there's also cars that are essentially abandoned, but they're well, that's another issue. Block. Those can get reported as well, and we can okay. uh, we can tag and, and and have the police take care of those. So okay. we know that's a problem too. Right. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks yep. for your time. <laughs> Thank you very much. Ron Johnson, um, I'm here this evening representing two of the South Austin Hill Hilltop communities, concerned neighbors, and the Neighborhood Square Watch Group. And the first question that they wanted me to ask was, while we appreciate this new bill, how secure are you on enforcing with all of these other bills and laws that are already on the books that there is no enforcement to, how secure are you in enforcing these new, uh, this new bill? Well, we believe this is going to make a, a real difference and give us uh, stronger powers that we don't have and give us greater capacity to do what we need to do. So large part of this is about enforcement, so I feel good about it. I feel committed. Do you want to address enforcement? Yes. That, uh, again, as the mayor just stated, that uh, our problem is that, that we don't have the, the teeth to be able to enforce what we need to enforce because the, right, right now, the, the laws are, uh, and the costs are so low, they rather pay the fine than do anything. So if the fine is 25 to $50, they'll pay that. 
But if we can increase these fines, and you can take these fines to these thousands of dollars that we're talking about, so and 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 the imprisonment, then that'll change some mindsets, and it will, it will also help us with continuing in the increase of our of our enforcement to tackle this problem. That this problem will decrease. Okay. So, okay. The second question is. Um, I have a direct email to Dave Patton where I just send pictures in our community because I'm the chairperson of the Neighborhood Square Watch Group. Now, the um, Zarka Street is a small street. Yes. So the, um, there's a property at 1845 and 1847, which is the same property owner, and there is um, a gentleman that works on the second floor that of 1847 who has took all this trash for the, this has been over a year i've been sending pictures downtown to Dave Patton, and it's still sitting there now if you know anything about zarker street zarker street is what you would call a flower street i even plant flowers around the poles on our side but because our fronts are at their uh, rears yes. and they're using their rears then, you know, it's unfair to us to be doing all this work on our property and making it look nice for us. Because if you go to a well-manicured community and you come back home to your well-manicured community, and the first thing you see when you open up your front door is all this junk. So we need it to be um, done away with. Now that you've been aware of, we know Azarka Street from 19 to 18, where it comes down to yes. the bottleneck, where the rear yes. of, Zarka, of, of Market Street is where the front of your homes are yeah. on Zarka mm -hmm. Street. We will now send our enforcement officer through there and, because we were not aware of, of what you're stating. And that's, this is the perfect opportunity here at this meeting for us to address these issues. And we will send the enforcement immediately to address these issues. All right. And the last one, and I'm going to stop, is John Alley. There is a property on South 19th Street, the first block of South 19th Street, and all you gotta do is go between 18 and Chest the 800 block of Chester Street, where John Alley is. You've been back there before. The trash is piled up in this vacant property all the way up to the hill. So if you could check that out too, we would much appreciate it. Yes, can you give your information to your lady right here, please? Thank you. Good evening, my name is John Patters. And uh, my question kind of dovetails with the last gentleman's. And my primary concern is that what can we do to get assurance from you that you're going to respond to the concerns that we have? You know, you say uh, um, um, use emails and those things. They don't guarantee that you're going to, you know, there's no guarantee that you got it or if you did get it and we call and ask you if we can get through, you say you didn't get it. You know, and, and uh, in addition, you know, you were talking about um, uh, designees. Is that going to be some kind of a rotational thing? You know, uh, is it going to be uh, standard set designees? You know, how many designees? Yeah, I don't know. If, I don't know if we know the answer to that quite yet. It probably depends. Well, I mean, because that, yeah. that, that still brings brings sure. to mind the fact that you're always saying we don't have the staff. You right. know, you're going to save $100,000 from us by not pushing out paper, which is more to your convenience and not ours. Because mm -hmm. you're saying now we'll bill you $388 every year. And then you're talking about the tax rolls. You're not going to do nothing but make five pages in the Patriot News of delinquent trash collection now. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, theoretically, we can put that savings back into hiring additional uh, well, dedicated Well, theoretically, yeah. you know. Bureaucracy never does, never saves money. No, no, money. actually, you know what? They, we have, they don't save money. They okay. just waste it on something right. else. Well, I will say we have made some real efforts over the past years to increase the capacity of the city. So, for instance, in the codes department, we are fully staffed now for the first time in anyone's memory for What's like the last 20 years. years. How many codes officers do we currently have at the moment? I think we're up to, is it, do we know the answer? Is it eight, nine, ten? It's not, I, I, yeah, but we, we've, we've more than doubled it from where we were when we started. We, uh, we also uh, uh, increased our, our parks maintenance staff a lot to take, to take care of a lot of the, the, the uh, grass cutting and trimming uh, and tree trimming issues that are there. And we have built back our sanitation force a lot. We were, we were as a city, on the brink of bankruptcy uh, and under receivership, we were stripped down to, to the bone, really, across. Uh, there was even talk of privatizing what was left of the Public Works Department. 
uh, eliminating uh, all of this. And we've, we've slowly but surely built it back up. Another example is our park rangers where we, we were down uh, to zero and we went to one and now two and now three this year. So I can definitely see us increasing our number of enforcement officers, and, but we have to do it in a financially responsible way. So uh, on the code side, uh, we, we increased a handful of fees and we were able to pay for the additional codes officers. If we can see a savings in the billing, we can put that back into sanitation. So I'm just, uh, those are just some of the, 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 this is our hope, but this isn't decided yet because it really is up to you all to weigh in and say this is either what you want or you don't want. It's up to city council to, uh, to make the final decision and the final vote. But I'm telling you that if we do go this course, then we will, we will effectively then make additional changes for next year's budget. Well, I've worked in the bureaucracy for over 40 years, and it's been my experience, once you reduce something to writing, it's almost a done deal. This thing here is probably going to be what it is. Well, I, I, it's not a done deal, and we're serious about these meetings, and we, uh, we're, we're having three of them, and we want to hear from you. And if you have specific ideas on things that you'd like to see differently, let us know, because I think there probably will be a series of amendments to uh, what's proposed. This is meant as a draft for discussion purposes. And is it a uh, prototype of something else? I think it is. It's just a, it's a draft. It's a prototype. You mean? I mean, from another another municipality <clears throat> or. Actually, uh, our law department did a lot, of, uh, a lot of work on this, and they did look at sanitation ordinances across Pennsylvania and, and looked at a lot of other cities. So we're trying to take uh, what we think are sort of best practices and put them together. But um, so uh, please, uh, you know, uh, t take home the copy tonight and, and get back to us with specific uh, comments. Thank you. Yeah. Good evening, Mayor Papenthus and your administration. My name is David Zalik, and yes, Harrisburg does have a 29th Street. I have two concerns. I'm speaking for a group of people that would be those that are disabled and those that are on a fixed income. Your proposal for the yearly sanitation bill, um, those on fixed income and low income, I don't understand how your proposal is going to work for those individuals. Okay. So uh, one thing that I did not mention in the, uh, in the PowerPoint is that we also have a provision so that if somebody wants to stay on a monthly plan, that they can sign up to pay monthly uh, and uh, Treasury will administer that. So um, uh, while we are encouraging people to go to a yearly billing, we are allowing a monthly option. I believe we're also allowing a quarterly option, so you have uh, you have the ability to come up with a slightly different payment plan. You'll you'll still, is that? Yeah, you'll still have to um, uh, you still have to pay over the course of uh, of the year, or you'll you'll go to collection along with the property tax collection. All right, for those that are not able to pay annually, are you yeah. proposing they'll be penalized? No, they would sign up, and they would uh, be able to pay monthly. Okay. At, at no uh, no different penalty from what currently happens now if you don't pay your, your monthly bill. All right, quarter, so, all right, as we stand now, when we receive our trash bills, they're normally dated four di uh, days prior to us getting the bill, and right. we only have so many days to pay it. Right. If you're on a fixed income, you end up automatically paying the fee, the late fee or the fine or whatever okay. you're calling it. So hopefully that, that wouldn't be the case. So, so what's going to be a little different now is you will, you will be generated this bill at the beginning of the year, and uh, maybe you'll choose to pay it all at once. Maybe you'll choose to pay it at a discount. Maybe you'll, you'll pay it during the regular period. Um, there's also a penalty period that you could pay it. So you could pay it on the, the last day of the year, but you'd be subject to um, the same penalties that happens. It's just like paying your property tax. There's a discount period, a regular period, and a penalty period. But what's even a little bit nicer is that uh, if you want to pay monthly, you can. You'll know what that monthly bill is at the beginning of the year because you'll sign up to pay monthly. And then you can plan ahead, and you're not going to be reliant on you know, getting that bill in the mail and, and uh, having it go out at the last minute and only having a couple of days to pay. So you'll, you'll, um, you can continue to pay monthly. So if you're a senior on a fixed income, you continue to pay monthly. The proposal, however, is that the default goes to yearly billing. And uh, if you want to keep it monthly, you have to sign up for it. 
So there is, there is an added, um, we'll call it a burden or responsibility on people, but we're gonna do a lot, if this passes, we will have um, many months here left in the year to communicate this and to send out notices, to help people get signed up early. So if they wanna get signed up and continue to pay monthly, is that, is that clear? I understand that. Okay. Uh, with the city's um, treasurer that we send our trash bills to, why does it take them anywhere from five to seven days to process it so that we're automatically hit with a late fee or a penalty? So, um, well, the Treasury's here, but I won't put them on the spot. I will say that uh, it, there's... It yeah, is yeah. what it is. It's the truth. No, it is. And sometimes what happens is uh, the bill will go out sort of at the last second, and you won't have a, 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 large, a long period of time to pay the bill. We're trying to eliminate all of that. In fact, we're trying to give people the option to get a discount off the bill, and um, by getting it I, once I a year... I don't think yeah. you're getting my point. If okay. people are on a fixed income, yep. okay, you're going to penalize those because we don't have the money to pay the annual fee. As long as you pay monthly, there would there be no penalty. Okay. You, you, you would be, there'd be no penalty, you just pay your monthly amount as long as you pay that on time. And what I'm saying is you'll, you'll know that amount at the beginning of the year and you'll sign up so you won't be, um, you won't be beholden on getting that bill in the mail or, or having to rush the, the, you know, the payment down at the last second. Okay, now with seniors, um, the elderly, the disabled, you're proposing the recycling. Okay. Uh, how do you expect those people to collect their glass and drive it to a recycling center? So we already have to rinse everything out. You know what, now mm -hmm. you want us to put it in a container, and now you want us to spend our gas money to drive it to a recycling <laughs> center. Okay. So we'll t we can talk about recycling. No, that's good. So um, right now we do have 10 different drop-off uh, centers throughout the community. So there, there, are, there are 10 spots and they're fairly evenly distributed so that they're, they're I mean, it's not totally inconvenient uh, to, uh, to, to certain areas of the city, well spread out. The reason that we have glass separate from the mixed stream has to do with the financial dynamics of the recycling industry and I business. And maybe you've, maybe you've also seen and read that there are going to be some pretty significant changes in the years to come because recycling markets worldwide have somewhat collapsed, especially with regard to paper products. And um, some of the places that have invested a lot of technology into the mixed stream um, uh, plants that are here in Pennsylvania are, are, are actually saying that they might have to change, uh, change their, their whole way of collecting things. So by separating out the glass, we're able to actually have it um, <clears throat> segregated and recycled in a way that makes financial sense, and it actually goes to a Pennsylvania company, and they come and they pick it up free of charge from the city. If we mix it in with the other recyclables, it breaks up, it tears up the machinery, it contaminates and pollutes the recyclables, it makes them less marketable. So it's better for the environment to, um, to split it up it's less convenient for people. Um, we get that, but we thought it was important to bring it back, which we did do this year, and to give people the option to do it. So uh, I am uh, open to others uh, answering that question, but I would think, you know, if neighborhoods could work together on that uh, and, and people could look out for one another and help, um, uh, help their neighbors who might have trouble recycling, that, well, that's well, uh, one Mr. option. Mayor, I, yes. I don't mean to interrupt you, but just for consideration, for the disabled, the elderly, uh, we already provide handicapped parking. Is it something you would consider to provide bins for those people as far as recycling? It is not everybody drives. I'm not going to get a, a, you know, a cardboard box full of glass and get it on the bus to take it to the Pine Village. I think we are open to suggestions for how to improve our recycling program across the board. And I think we're, we're open to the possible return at some point of curbside glass uh, pickup. That would be an expensive endeavor for the city, but we're open to it. We're, we're willing to consider it if we can afford to do it. So um, I think uh, this is a chance for feedback and uh, you're giving it to the right people, the decision makers, and well, that's something I, we I can consider. I just want everybody to understand that not everybody in the city is affluent. Yes. The majority of the city are people that are on fixed incomes and this is a proposal that would be a hardship for most of those people. 
Well, as long as they sign up for the monthly payment plan, I don't think it's uh, it's that much. Uh, hopefully, it well, wouldn't well, be a hardship. Yeah, we're talking water yeah. and recyclables. Okay, okay. in ter terms of recyclables, why don't we? Yes, we have our uh, recycling coordinator here. I, we realize that this this glass program is, to, to some people's feeling, a step backwards from what we've been able to accomplish to date. But as the mayor said, this is the way it's it's working these days. But we are very interested if you have some if you have glass and you want to you want to collect it for a while and then let us know that you that you have it then we can come and get it from you um, we were well, then hoping that needs to be sent out to the citizens that are in that situation so that they clearly understand the city will be able to do that for them all right well we'll make a point of doing that okay and the you know, the idea of having these different drop-off points is that, you know, when, you're, when people do have cars and they're out and about, they'll take care of this on their way to someplace else. Uh, that we, don't want, we don't want people going just to take their glass. Um, but we, also, we realize that there are, are, are plenty of people who will have this kind of problem, but we, want to, we do need to hear from them to find out how we can tailor the program to help them. So I'd like to talk to you after the meeting and get your details and any information you have about other people. So, and if there are a, the best thing would be if you have a group of houses, a group of people who want to do this and we can have a, a specific container for all of you and you'll fill it up and we'll come and get it. And uh, so let's talk after the, uh, the meeting, okay? I, I Thank think you. before we make any promises on what we do, um, we should get the information from you and other people who may have similar issues because we may be able to come up with a better plan. Okay. So. Appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, we thank you for the feedback. I think it's very useful. So. And, and also with the um, dumping problem. Now, when I say that, yes, Harrisburg has a 29th Street, we tend to be ignored. When you call 911, they're going, is this Pakistan? Is this Harrisburg? Is this Susquehanna Township? Yes, Harrisburg has a 29th Street, and we are neglected. It's become an area where people feel quite confident. Rush hour traffic down 29th Street backs all the way up to my house, which is approximately two blocks up the hill from Derry. They throw their trash out the windows, and we have to go out every other day and pick up McDonald's trash, you know what I mean? They buy lottery tickets, they throw them out of the window, and you spend your time, if you're disabled and you have bad days, you, you have to waste your time instead of taking care of your house, you have to go out and pick up trash on 29th Street in the city of Harrisburg. And dumping where I live, my property runs back to 28th Street. Now, where I live, there's a large parking lot, there's huge trees, it's a beautiful neighborhood, but people find that uh, an ideal place to come and dump. Okay. And, you want, you want and when, you, when you try to call somebody, it's like there's no response. Again, again, sir, if you would contact the Public Works Department through our website or through our 311 system, let me share with you. This Public Works team is, is not your ordinary Public Works team that just talked to you. On behalf of Aaron Johnson, who's the director of Public Works, we have a passion for we this entire team. We have a passion for what we do. It's not an eight-hour job. We don't come to work and say, oh, we come to work to, to serve the residents of the city of Harrisburg, and we do it daily. We have a bulk truck out every day for all of the phone calls that we receive, that we call from the 311 system, what we get from the website. And we also we send a small clam truck out for small areas that our clam truck can get into. We're there. We get we receive calls on the weekend. Our phones are not allowed to be shut off, and it's not on. It, it, it's not because we're off on the weekend, because we attend to any emergency situation that happens throughout this city. So we are here to serve the public, and we we need all of this information. So. Uh, we, we can so solve the problems that are out there. There's some problems that we just don't know. You're misinformed of the direction that you should take, but that's why we're here today. Now, sir, you just um, directed me to a website. 
it's nice to think that everybody has a smartphone or a computer. They can go to a website. This is a poor city, and most of the residents in this city don't have access to computers or smartphones. Okay, sir, we understand that, and so we're saying you can also reach out through the 311 on any phone in the city of Harrisburg to make calls to our, our help desk, and then they can route you to the proper uh, facility, the proper uh, department within the city of Harrisburg. And respectfully, I'd ask any additional questions you may have, could you provide them in writing to Chardin next to you? We have a line of folks that's stacking up, and if you have additional questions, you can feel free to come back around, but we want to make sure that everyone gets an opportunity to, to speak here and have their issues addressed. I, I thank you, and I think I spoke for my group and a lot of people in the audience, okay. and I appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Good evening. My name is uh, Matt Coleman. Um, he took one of the questions that I did have. Uh, about uh, senior citizens, which is a concern, you know, uh, for a lot of people on fixed income. My next question would be, um, I know like during the snow um, storm you guys had, private contractors come in. Is that something that could be looked at for having contractors come in maybe every three months or something like that to help with public works to get some of these uh, lots that are filling up with trash and stuff like that to to really like throw something at it like once a year or what have you just to kind of clear out some of these places that it seems like a lot of people in the city are becoming frustrated because they're being overlooked you know because they're in certain neighborhoods or what have you so I'm just saying is that something that maybe public works can look at possibly doing since during that snowstorm you had these contractors that wanted to come in here with their equipment there's a lot of people that have equipment that they love to come and play with uh, I don't know if that's something that could be placed on the table for public works. Well, in City of Harrisburg, during our major snowstorm, the, the reason why that we received the contractors was to remove the snow because of the 30-inch snowstorms that we received. And we, we have the capacity to be able to have the 12 to 16-hour crew, but as the snow continued, it, it came beyond what we can handle. As far as the illegal dumping up to this point, we can handle it. We just need the information to be able to handle it. And if it becomes beyond our means, we have other means to be able to handle it. We have a sanitation crew that we can involve our highway department with, and we can intertwine the sanitation and highway department, which is a part of Public Works, and then we can attack those issues. We also have the capacity to be able to, if you get a small community together and you get a community to clean up, we have the capacity of, of, of cleaning up, the com helping you clean up your community as you want to clean up your community. There's many di uh, different directions that you can take for us to tackle uh, all of this blight and this um, illegal dumping that's happening throughout the city. But at this time, we don't need to um, hire any contractors as far as the blight in the city. We have hired some contractors for demolition. That is one place where we decided this, this past year. We said we would take um, a certain portion of the budget and use it to, uh, to outsource it in addition to what was in-house. So that's, that's one area where we've applied that philosophy. Can, can I come back to that for uh, one second? I guess these properties that you say are being demolished, I guess having people having the chance to purchase that, meaning the inner city people to purchase these properties instead of maybe outside the city people will be doing investing within the city, which is good, but having, I guess, you know, more, I guess, uh, community involvement in some of the properties that are coming open from the places being I think down. there's a tax sale tomorrow, I was told, uh, I believe, and it's, uh, you got to know what you're getting yourself into when you purchase some of these properties. They can, uh, and that's, that's one of the issues, but uh, they're open. They're open to anyone. It is true that there are a lot of speculators that come in from out of town and, and purchase, but um, we'd much prefer them to, to be sold to people who live here and um, are committed to fixing them up. So maybe check out the list tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Did you, I don't know if people want to say anything or have something to say. Yeah, well, I, I want on on the subject of. Um, of our, of our failing to pick up certain piles of trash and, and the way they accumulate and, uh, and people are frustrated by it. The whole purpose of rewriting this ordinance and giving us the ability to find people strongly is to take care of that, is to, is to because we, we didn't have, we didn't have a legal authority uh, to take care of these things and to enforce it correctly. 
and we're very confident now that when we when we investigate these the dumps and we go to the the, the homes where the, where people are, are habitually trashing everything now we had the teeth to do something about it and so we're hoping you see a very different situation once this ordinance is passed good evening my name is lisa powell the one issue with the guide about the recycle of the glass if y'all can get another recycle bin and just for the recycled glass only whoever comes around can pick that up i live right down the street from one of your glass there's other people popping glasses late at night and they don't live around here so somebody else is aware of that issue right here on hudson street so they're popping glass and i hear it late at night time I'm right there on Hudson Street, right in the back. So somebody else is aware of this issue. So they're taking their glass and they're busting it over in there, in that area. So this is at nighttime, late at night. So, so right now, <clears throat> Dauphin County does not recycle glass. We are the only uh, municipality within Dauphin County that so does so. Yeah. The building down here, uh, the armory, there's yep. glass in the back part. That's right. People's putting glass back in there. They're busting glass late at night time, back in there. So somebody is a window that little issue right there. So I hear it late at night time okay. of glass. So if you can get a recycle bin just for glass only, and even if it's glass is not filled up every week or every two weeks or whatever, if we can just stick it out there and let whoever comes around and pick it up. I wouldn't want to see elderly people driving cars and putting glass in their car and, and dropping it off in different sites. I mean, that's, that's not good at all you know or anything and the second issue is if y'all decide to buy this building can you bring the building here so we can make the payments here instead of downtown to make it easier okay to make it easy to make it easier i mean i work downtown i have to leave work at lunchtime to come pay the bill you know so if you do decide to make the bill it's easy parking it's easy for everybody in the city of Hasbro to drop it off and keep it moving. If you're downtown, you gotta pay three dollars to find a parking spot to run in. Sometimes you got a line, sometimes you don't have a line. You know. Another issue is um, if you decide to do the yearly billing, bring out your green form at the end of the year so it will not be infected with the people that has property taxes that's inside their mortgage. So they won't see that. Then they have to call the mortgage company and say, I will pay this bill separate. So if you decide to do a yearly form, send it out the end of December, a green form, letting them know this is $400. This is your taxes. This is what you owe for the, the sewage, for your trash. So instead of putting all in with the other bill, then I will have to call my tax people, tell them don't pay that, I'll pay that. And you know what, that going into escrow and all that other stuff. So if it's a separate bill and it comes in the green form like you send them every month, that's fine. That'll be easy. One piece of paper, the end of the year. And we know that's from the city, that green form. So instead of putting it in with the taxes, then you gotta call the tax people, it's in your escrow, and some people might have extra money in their escrow to pay their, ex their taxes more, you know, or pay their mortgage down. So if they can do like that, that'll help out easy. Another issue is, as far as the trash, I check my trash every day. I get other people's trashes that does not live in the city of Harrisburg. Yes. I have opened up trash. I live in the back of the rehab building. I get other people's trash I have opened up that does not live in the city of Harrisburg. And this is, they know when our dumping is. They know when our trash day is. And they dump inside there. Mm. I've been trying to catch them, but it's late at night time when they come and they dump trash in our trash cans. And I'm like, this is not my trash. I open it up, this is somebody else's trash. So that's, you know, the issue. Well, on that last issue, well, go ahead. Yeah. On, on yeah. the last issue, yeah. you just spoke with Dave. If you can give us some contact information with uh, Ms. Chardin, who's right next to on your right, she can. We can have our uh, 
our enforcement officer maybe come take a look and, and see if there's anything that he can do. But like you said, what you can do to help is try to identify those individuals so we can go after them. And additionally, on the, the proposal, again, I'll state that it's a proposal to do the annual billing. We're not wed to anything right now, so that's why we're having these meetings to get the feedback from the community. And some of these ideas that, ideas that are coming down, we can look to implement as we have these different hearings throughout the city of Harrisburg. So. Again, I just want to point out, we are not wed to that idea yet. We're hearing different things from different community members, which is good for council to hear, so that as we go through the process, if changes and amendments need to be made, we can make them. And another issue from the gentleman, my daughter does it every four or five months. If you have a block and you want to clean out, you can call the city. They will bring the bags. You can call, have your neighbors all get together and clean out whatever's inside your yard or whatever's inside your house. Put it on the corner and they will come and pick it up. And they do do that. Not 29th Street, they don't. No, 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 no. What, no. what, what she's saying is that you would have to call you the city of Harrisburg. Right. So if you've got a street and you want to say, I, I send papers around, I want to clean up. And if you've got stuff inside, yes, they do a bulk a week. So if you've got everything that's inside there, you can put it out. My daughter just did hers on 18th Street. And they, she cleaned up the whole block. And whatever people had in her yard, had inside her house, they came and picked it up. So she does this every so many months. She goes to her neighbor, she tells them, and they bring out whatever they have inside. So it's not a whole bunch of stuff sitting in other people's yards or anything else. No, they don't have dumpsters. No, they stuck it on the corner. They called the city. They told the city what they was doing. They got the, the paper, the, or, the thing, and they came and picked it up.